Well, we're in the final, the final uh, message today of a series we've been doing called Grateful. Everybody say grateful. grateful. And what we've learned is this. First of all, that Jesus Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly, which means this. He wants you to live a great, full life. And what we found during this series is the way to live a great, full life is to live a grateful life. Come on, somebody been listening to the pastor. I love it. I trust that this series has helped you and you found yourself becoming more grateful. Has it helped you at all? I'm glad you said yes because we could just shut this thing down like, no, pastor, you wasted three weeks of our time. I I know it has for me. It's just made me more grateful. It made me think about things that I didn't think about and and thankful for things that I kind of pass over at times. I'd like to take this as a text today, Psalms 107 and 21. We're going to start out there. Then we're going to deviate a minute, and then we're going to come back to it, okay? So don't freak out if we don't finish it out. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Isn't that a good passage of Scripture? I love how the psalmist starts it off very emphatically. Oh, oh, remember the old song, oh, how I love Jesus. Remember that? Love Jesus. There's something about that O. Oh, and, and when you see that in Scripture or in writing, you know, okay, this person is really wanting me to get this. There, was, there were no emojis back then, okay? Where you, you, you know when you, when you used to text without emojis, there was just, it was just dead, dry text, right? And now you can put an emoji on it. Matter of fact, you can put your own face in an emoji on it, which is terrifying. I don't know if you've done that. Uh, but I love that he starts it out with this. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord. And what he's saying here is, oh, that we would stop taking credit for what God's done. And oh, that we would stop saying it's all about the hustle and the grind and no days off, which is, by the way, very unbiblical, okay? Or, oh, man, I've been so lucky. He said, no, I want you to have this mindset where you're looking around for the blessings in your life, and when you see them, you're immediately giving God credit for it. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Has the Lord been good to you today? Yes. Come on, how about the rest of you? Has the Lord been good to you today? Yes. Then give him thanks. It's just that simple. I don't really know how can I be thankful. Has God been good to you today? Then give him thanks. I love what the psalmist said in Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord For he is good. Remember, we've talked about this. He's not good because he does good. He just is good. And because he is good, he does good, right? That's enough for us to thank God for his goodness. And then he goes on, he says, give thanks for his wonderful works. Let me ask you this. Has God done anything for you? I know that you said he's been good to you, but can you find a specific thing that God has done for you this week? We could write a book on just the things that God did for us this past seven days. And the psalmist says, if he's done wonderful works in your life, then give him thanks. Psalms 9-1, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Has he done anything good for you? Give him thanks. Earlier this, during this series, we read Psalms 100, which is a powerful Uh, passage of scripture, the the entire passage, but we took verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, today we have a pre-service huddle, uh, every service at 9.05, isn't that what we do at 9.05 and all the folks that are serving all over over our our venue here, they meet out there and, and we have a time of a prayer, we have a time. Well, today, we started it with just singing, thank you, Lord. Just acoustic guitar and just sang, singing. It was beautiful out there in the atrium. The acoustics it echoed. And, and we just said this, Lord, we want to obey the scripture by coming into your gates with thanksgiving. Not walking in asking you to do something. We're going to start the day with gratitude. What if we entered each day that way? What if you just woke up every single day saying, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Remember a few weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, we talked about the boring blessings. Remember that? The blessings that are just the mundane miracles that we it's so easy to forget about. And I preached about that last week, and someone sent me a video, and we don't always do this, but I, but I want to show it to you. Maybe you've seen it. It went viral. I think it really describes how we should enter each day and how we should deal with the mundane miracles and boring blessings. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alive! I'm alive! Yeah? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, Christine! You're here too! Mm. I love you! I know! Dad! What's happening? Uh, honey, the power works! It's coming, it goes on and off! Whatever we want! <laughs> We've got clean water! Oh, that's great. Look at that. Ooh. I bet I know what this does. Rain down the glorious water. Ah, shoes. Oh, what do we got here, guys? Food. Mm, I love food. What? A food? A food? Do you not have work? This is awesome. Look, look at here. Dude, the what? Jack, be careful! Oh, I have a car! Did you guys see this? Yeah, you have a car! Oh, a car! <laughs> and don't forget your coffee! You're the best. <laughs> ah, there you go. I like that. I think that describes it right. you right, amen? Yeah. Come on, why don't we just woke up each morning? Ah, you're still here, baby. Thank the Lord. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite part. Y'all know I told Kristen when we got married, I said, if you ever leave me, I'm packing up and going with you, all right? <laughs> you're going to get to the door. You're going to hear some of me behind you with suitcases. Where are we going, baby? I'm going, where are we going? The mundane miracles. What if we just woke up that way? Let me ask you this. What if we came to church that way? Uh-oh, done going to preaching now, huh? No, but really, what if we showed up to church with this mindset, I get to be here. I'm a heathen. I was a heathen. Maybe a religious heathen, but I was a heathen. And God's grace, by his grace and his glory, he allows me to be here. I love what Psalms 122 says. When they said, let's go to the house of God, my heart leaped for joy. Look at this one, what the message says in Psalms 42. I was always at the head of the worshiping crowd, right out front, leading them all, eager to arrive and worship, shouting praises, singing thanksgiving, celebrating all of us. It's a God's feast. I love that he says out front leading them all. Do you know leaders lead? Did you know that? Leaders lead. What if, what if we could have this mentality, man, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to get a good seat. I'm going to sit up front. I'm going to be an example. Uh-oh, I'm getting quiet now. On the front rows, amen to me right now. <laughs> I love that he said eager to arrive and worship. Let me say that again, eager to arrive and worship. We have a, you know, we, we keep this closed off until right before service time so everybody can get to hang out and drink coffee and all that. And then we have our hills tones that go off. You know that? Dong, dong, dong. I would love there to be a stampede of people just coming in, getting ready, eager to worship. I can't wait to get in there. Instead of us having to say, come on, lift it up, we're having to tell you, hey, quiet it down a little bit, all right? It's, it's time for something else. Enthusiastic. Don't you, how many of you love enthusiastic people? Now, look, I'm not talking about over-the-top, butt of the elf type people. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about people that, that are rooted and grounded, but they're enthusiastic. You know what I found is this. Enthusiastic people enthuse people. Yeah. Enthused people enthuse people. Do you know who the most enthusiastic group in our church is? Hills Kids. They are crazy about church. We hear it all the time. Kids wanting to go to church. Some of you are here right now. You wouldn't even be here today if your kids didn't say, I want to go to church. I want, I want to be at church. Do you know how amazing that is? How many of us grew up trying to find excuses not to go to church? Come on, raise your hand. Faking sick and 
hiding keys and what I got to do. I'm so glad we're a part of a church that our Hills Kids team makes our kids want to go to church. It's amazing. Look, I know I've showed a lot of video, but watch this. This, watch this. this is amazing. This is Jude Ingram, Jared and Chantel's son. That the, she sent this to me this week. Real quick, show this. You got it? Go bye bye. What do you want to do? I'll go church. Ah, yeah, you love that? I want to eat him up, man. <laughs> Think about that. In the middle of the week, he's saying, I'm go bye bye. Where? I'm go church. What if we had that same mindset? Man, going to the house of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see people that I love. I got to tell you this. One thing I love about going to church with y'all is I really like y'all. <laughs> I just learned that life is too short to do life with people you don't like, okay? Yes. Amen. That's a good lesson for some of you young folks right there. Now, you got to work with some people. I'm talking about being in partnership with people and being in covenant with people. And I love the fact that I walk through those doors and I'm just looking for, oh, I can't wait to see you and hug you and see how your day's been going on. What if we had this mindset, though, the, uh, just like Jude, I, I want to go to church. One of the greatest things you can ever hear your kids say is that. Yeah. One of the greatest things they could ever say, I want to go to church. What if we were that enthusiastic about God's house? I'm going to tell you what would happen. We'd have so many people coming to church, we'd have to start another service and get another campus if we were just enthusiastic about God's house. We'd have so many people finding abundant life. We would be increasing the population of heaven, right? Not just building the hills. Who cares about that? I'm talking about increasing the population of heaven. How many want to be a part of that? Aren't you glad God allows us to do that? Here's how you do it. Just be enthusiastic about the house of God. Just an attitude of gratitude about church. If you and I had that, you wouldn't have to even think about inviting people to church. If you were just fired up about living for God, they would be saying, I want to go with you. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're smoking or drinking, but I don't know what you're doing, but I want to be a part of what it is. Look, you don't have to be as loud and crazy as me, but you can be enthusiastic in your own way because enthused people enthuse people. Imagine if we just all showed up grateful. Psalms 35 says, I'll give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the throngs, I will praise you. Just showing up to God's house, ready to give him thanks. But not just on Sunday. Can I preach a little bit stronger today? Not just on Sunday. Give thanks in the sanctuary. But look at what 2 Samuel says. Therefore, I will give thanks unto you, O Lord, among the heathen. And I will sing praises Unto your name. Not just in church, but giving thanks in the world, in the marketplace, in your, in your, in your job, and, and in your neighborhood, giving thanks. First Chronicles says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world, everybody say the world. Let the whole world know what he has done. Psalms 107, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. I love this. Has the Lord redeemed you? I'm asking you, has the Lord redeemed you? Then it says, then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Look, it's not thanksgiving if you just keep it in your heart. There's got to be, it's got to come out of you. You, I can be thankful for my wife all day long, but at some point I've got to tell her how thankful I am for her. And what the scriptures tell us is God doesn't just want us telling him. He doesn't just want us telling each other. He wants us telling everybody. I am thankful for what God has done for me. First of all, let me help you with this. Did you know the only thing you need to be thankful is your testimony? I'm going to say it this way. Your testimony is the only thing you need to be thankful. If you ever need something to increase your gratitude, remember your redemption. How many can remember the day that Jesus Christ saved your soul? Man, if you can't, you need to backtrack to it, okay? Because when those days come and you're down and you're depressed and you're lonely and things aren't working out, what if you just went back to that day when he did not have to save you because you had done nothing good. But because of his grace and his goodness and his glory, he took your wretched life and gave you his life. That's enough to be thankful for, amen. So the, oh, yeah, come on, that's good, amen. And when you remember it, speak out about it. 
Begin to tell your story. The only thing you need to be thankful is your testimony. And then also this. And being thankful is the only thing you need to share your testimony. Did you get that? Let me say it again for those taking notes. Your testimony is all you need to be thankful. And being thankful is all you need to share your testimony. One of the greatest ways for you to witness to other people is just be thankful. Just a grateful person. Why are, why are you so thankful when things are going so bad? It's amazing what that will do. We have a young lady in our church that is walking through a, a, a tough time right now, her health-wise. Uh, precious husband and wife and serve so faithfully and give and just really engaged and got a, got a report. Uh, and, and, and we asked her, we said, how are you doing? And she said, you know what, I'm believing that my family is going to come to know the Lord through this situation because they're going to see how I'm walking through it. Yeah. And I talked to her today, how are you doing? I'm grateful, I'm thankful. What, what, if, what if that's the one thing that's going to lead someone to a closer relationship with God is them watching how you're walking through a situation and a circumstance? Your coworkers, come on. What, what if they could just see you being grateful? Your neighbors, your, your teammates, your classmates, your teachers. What if your teachers could see you being grateful and thankful? Teachers, what if your students could see you being grateful and thankful? What if on social media, that's what we were doing. We were, we were posting about the redemption in our life. I will tell you this, this is, this is one, this is one of the, the big platforms that each of us have. And when I talk about it sometimes, people are like, ah, what? I'm telling you, social media is one of the greatest platforms you have to share the testimony of God, what he's done in your life. Yeah. The gratefulness, being grateful for what God has done. I love, I love what Psalms 107 said, oh, thank God he is good. His love never runs out. All of you set free by God, tell the world. Tell how he freed you from oppression. Listen, now I want you to hear me very clearly. And I did this last week and it got your attention, okay? So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do the old preacher tiptoe move, okay? You know, when the preachers, no matter what denomination you came from, if the preacher, it'll be all right. If the preacher... <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. You know, you know, how many know I'm talking about? When the preacher wanted to make a good point, they do this, my God. All right? So I'm going to give you the old preacher tiptoe move, and I want you to hear what I'm saying. We are God's marketing plan. He shed his blood, he died on the cross, he resurrects, he goes to his disciples, and he gives them the great commission. He says, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth, so now I want you to go. I'm giving it to you. I want you to go into all the world. I want you to make disciples. I want you to baptize them. I want you to lay hands on the sick. This, this great commission, we, we are the hope of the world. Now, I know that Jesus is the hope of the world. You know what I'm saying, right? But now he has placed his authority and power in us. Can I tell you something that's a little scary to me? There is no backup plan. It's us. We are the ones. You and I. That's why I would encourage us as a church, don't ever stop being a bringer. I got a little mm-hmm and a yes over there. I want to encourage you today, don't stop being a bringer. Bring people to God's house. Invite people to church. Get, get, tell, make a reservation for you for lunch, Okay. Don't just tell them to come to church say, I will meet you in the parking lot. I will save you a space. I'll stand in the parking space just like this, wave everybody off, and then when you come in, we'll park. I'll meet you in the lobby. I'll have coffee for you. We can sit together. We can go to lunch afterwards, okay? What if, let, let's keep this mentality. Aren't you glad that someone invited you to God's house one day? I want to encourage you, let's be a bringer. Let, let's be conveyors of hope to the world. This is, this is God's marketing plan to get his gospel to the world. Look at your neighbor and say, it's you, baby. It's you, baby. Back to our text. I told you we'd come back to it. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then he says this, let them sacrifice... The sacrifices of thanksgiving. The sacrifices of thanksgiving. 
The word thanksgiving in the Hebrew means an extension of the hand. In other words, thanksgiving is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not a thank you. It is actually taking something that costs you something and giving it. Thanksgiving is supposed to cost us something. That's why serving, when you serve in God's house and you serve in the community and you serve your family and you serve one another, that's a way of thanking because you are giving. I looked at the guys that showed up so early today to set up here. And I, I, I look at, like, how do they do that? And it's because they're thanking the Lord. They get to be a part of preparing a place for God's presence. I look at people that take care of kids all week long, and yet they're in the back today loving, loving what they're doing, enthusiastic about Hills Kids. How do they do that? Because they know that God's given them a chance to minister to someone else's children. You see what I'm talking about? Serving is a way of thanking. Giving is a way of thanking. I think about those of you that think, man, what could I do with that extra 10%? Well, I love the mindset shift that goes, well, thank you for giving me everything I have. Not just the 10%, not just the 90%. You've given me all of it. I think about you precious people, that us precious people, that pledged for our legacy campaign for three years. That is asking a lot. But I'm going to tell you how my wife and I did it. We did it, and, we, man, we could use that money, especially at this time. But we made a pledge because we said, Lord, thank you for letting us be a part of building you a house. You see the mindset shift there? When you begin to see serving and giving as thanking God, and then when we give our tithes and our offerings and our legacy pledges, when we give, we're showing God our gratitude. Every single time that you give, not just to the church, when you give to someone in need, when you give to your husband, when you don't feel like bringing him a plate, all right? When you minister to a neighbor, every time you do that, you are saying, God, I'm giving you thanks that you're allowing me to be a part of this. And watch this, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. I love this. You will be enriched in every way. Man, I love that. Say it with me, enriched in every way. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Enriched in every way. Do you know God wants to bless you abundantly? He doesn't just want to bless you. He wants to bless you with more than enough. Why would God want to give me more than enough? The very next thing, so that we can be generous on every occasion. You know the blessings are never about you, right? The overflow is never about us. Anytime God gives us more, it's because he wants us to give more, to serve more, to do more, to be more. I ain't a good preacher, but that's good preaching right there. Amen. And then he said this, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So watch this. Your generosity produces even more gratefulness. I love how God's plans always go full circle. Don't you love that? They always go full circle. Here we go. Watch this. We give because we're grateful, and our giving causes others to be grateful. Can I say that one more time? I see some of you writing, all right? I'm so honored when you take notes. Oh, you're playing tic-tac-toe. Okay, great. I love that some of y'all looked over there like someone would be doing that. Let me say it again. We give because we're grateful, and our giving causes others to be grateful. Paul says this, and God's grace reaches more and more people, and there will be great thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. When we serve, when we give, when we share, when the gospel reaches more people, two things happen. People are reached with God's grace, and God is glorified. And isn't that what it's all about? You know, here at the Hills, we talk about three things, loving, giving, living. We talk about loving, we have two, two, two places that love goes, him and them. Loving, him and them. That takes the focus off of us, doesn't it? And I love, that's what Paul is saying. When God's grace has re- reached more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will give glory. And that's what it's all about. At some point, I have to get the focus off of me and what can God do for me and 
what can my church do for me? And I have to start thinking about, okay, God, this is a place where you've placed me in so that I can give you glory and share your gospel with more people. How do we do that? Thanksgiving. Just being grateful. I've had so many people that said to me over the over 30 years of ministry, they'll say, man, if I just had your gift, if I get on stage and I, I, I can't even talk in front of people, you don't have to have that, my gift. Matter of fact, God doesn't want you to have my gift. He doesn't want you to have the gift of the person beside you. What he does want you to do is just be grateful. Be grateful. Be thankful. Buying someone's meal. It's one of our favorite things to do. Just buy, buy someone's meal. Why would you do that? Because I'm grateful. God's given me some extra money. I can do that. This gratefulness. This attitude of gratitude. In a few moments, we're going to have our generosity time. And I want to encourage you as you give to see it, what it really is, thanksgiving. Some of you have already given online. Thank you for doing that. But as the offering comes around in a little while, why don't you just say, Lord, I've already given, but I'm, I've done it. I did it because I'm grateful for you. How many are grateful for God's grace today in God's house? Close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus for this day and thank you for a beautiful time of worship thank you for every single person that's here this morning I thank you Lord that you do all things well and that God you have you brought the people here today that you know needed to be here I'm praying right now Lord for your precious spirit to do what I can't do God, for those that are here today that, that you've been speaking to them about being more grateful. And we've been talking about it for an entire month. Dedicating this month to thanksgiving. I, I pray, Lord, that as you move today by your spirit. There are people in this room, God, that their heart is hardened. Or your word says that you would take a heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh. I pray you would do that today. Thank you for your grace and your goodness. I pray, Lord, today that as we go out this week, that you would let us see people. Highlight them to us, Holy Spirit. People that your, your spirit is drawing. And let us be a conduit. And as they see our thanksgiving to you, Lord, it would draw them to you. I pray north, south, east, and west, give up the sons and daughters. Every honest heart that belongs to God, bring them in, Lord. Bring them in. Let the hills be a part of reaching this city for the glory of God. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you an opportunity today to make a step toward Jesus. And I don't know what your step is. For some of you, it may be your first step. That's the biggest step you can ever make in your life. Your first step toward Jesus. And here's what we say around here. We don't have to get you all the way to heaven today. We just want to help you make a next step. Can we just help you make a next step closer to Jesus? So if you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord, you've never fully committed your life to Him, we're going to give you an opportunity to do that in just a moment. Or maybe you're a believer but it's not fresh, it's stagnant. You've allowed it just to become, place it in the back seat. But today you want to make a recommitment to Jesus. Something was said today, something was sung today. When we sung about His grace and His, his blood and the, the price that He paid. And something in you said, man, I remember that feeling. Today, if you want to recommit your life today. So first time, our first time in a long time. We're going to pray this prayer together. Come on, pray it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace. And say it again. Say, thank you for your grace. Thank you that I get to be a part of it. I pray today that you would forgive me of doing things my own way. When I'm greedy, when I overlook the blessings you've given me. Today I confess that you are the giver of all good things. I want to be your child. I'm running towards you. And I know you're running toward me. 
I accept your love and I accept you into my heart. Come on, say this. Fill me with your spirit and help me to live an overcoming, abundant, and everlasting life in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Come on, let's celebrate with these folks today that made this fresh start.